Hi, my name is Ron Hall with Ranch Cordova Arts, and welcome back to another Ranch Cordova Arts art tutorial. Today, we're going to be painting trees. Just kidding. Be very, very quiet. We're looking for a knot supply. Actually, I'm looking for a tree limb, so that is why the tree. Aha. Uh -huh. You may ask, what are we using this for? Well, I'm glad you asked. All right, well, this is a piece I did a couple years ago called uh, Inspiration for the Muse. It's abstract expressionism, and it leads us into the topic of today is abstract expressionism and our artist Jackson Pollock. So after World War II, um, many artists um, from Europe came to America and New York for the first time, America in general, um, came to be the epicenter for art. So it moved away from Paris to New York City, and many of those artists um, are famous for abstract expressionism. Yay! You guys can come back next time because we're going to do a painting on cats. But as I move forward, uh, the artist Jackson Pollock um, kind of invented a technique called um, the all-over method or action painting where he would stand... Um, over a huge canvas and be able to move it around um, all four corners to um, kind of just really get into his work using sticks or brushes with uh, house paint. Um, sometimes his cigarette ashes and sand and um, pieces of glass would make their way into his painting and um, he really set the forefront of um, modern abstract painting and we're going to be talking about that today. All right, let's talk about the supplies that we're gonna to use today. Uh, a canvas of any size, could even be a flat piece of cardboard, paper towel, uh, spray paint if you wanna do a base covering before we get into our artwork, the stick or tree limb that we found, and uh, various acrylic paints you can use. You can thin them out, put them in a little, a little cup, uh, like a Dixie cup or a salsa container, just so they're real thin and they're gonna fly for you. Um, what I like to use most of all are um, sample paints that you use um, for painting inside walls of your home. Uh, just little sample uh, latex paints of various colors that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store or paint supply. Um, this is a larger canvas that I'm going to use today, so let's get into our artwork. All right, I decided I'm going to spray paint in my... Uh little canvas. This is like a nine and a half by nine and a half, which is an odd size. Um, found it, it's got like a little ding in it, so this is a perfect uh, piece just to kind of practice on. So I'm going to spray paint it black um, outside. Uh, if, if you need to work uh, near your home, you can find a like a cardboard box or um, a little tarp or whatever because paint will go everywhere. But we're going to go ahead and prime this first with just some black paint and then we'll have a, a basic surface that we can start our abstract expressionist painting on. All right, we are back. Our uh, little stretch canvas has been spray painted and while we're waiting for that to dry, it gives me an opportunity to talk about why I like to use uh, little samples of latex paint. Well, they're fairly inexpensive. You can get various colors that you want. And um, one of the reasons why I got into it was one, I saw a documentary on Jackson Pollock and I, I noticed he was using house paint and I liked the way that the latex paint just kind of flew off his brush. And two, I was painting my house one time and the paint was flying a little bit. I'm like, wow, it does kind of fly. I'm going to give this a try. And so I, I tried different things like straws or sticks, but I really found that um, tree limbs, because they're kind of springy and the tree I have in my front yard, um, gives me an opportunity when these fall to, to use these. And so I just kind of break off a little um, limb and dip it in the paint and kind of go to work. It's really simple and uh, we'll get into doing that now. All right, we're back. We're in an area that I'm not worried about getting paint on. I've got a box, got my canvas. I'm gonna start off with some uh, white uh, latex paint and got my paper towel here. I've broken off a stick, and so we'll get to work here. Um, some of these cans um, are kind of pressed where you uh, have to get a screwdriver or um, a little device to open up the uh, 
The other ones that I get for samples are screw on top, so that makes it easy. But we're going to start off with white and just show you what I do. I'll kind of stir this up a little bit. And I'm going to get the lid out of the way. And uh, this is just relaxing. I paint a lot of detail work with small brushes, and so this just allows me... Um, to relax and just go with it very intuitive it just kind of happens so there we go and uh, I'm just doing this not much to it except a flick of the wrist and kind of create as you go and so I'm gonna let that dry that is uh, my base. Um, I can let this dry. I can go over it with multiple colors. Um, I can use a paper towel to uh, blot that down. I'll show you kind of how I do that in a second after we get this a little bit worked out. But um, what I've done in the past to create texture is do something like this and then paint completely over it. And then um, I can use a uh, a uh, putty knife for other things to create texture over that and I know uh, Cheryl Gleason talked about doing marks there's different things you can do to make texture and uh, using a, a putty knife to go over that and make marks is another cool way to make texture so um, you don't have to wait for this to dry I'm gonna go get some more paint and we'll keep going okay I went and got blue this is a really cool color what exact blue it is, I don't know. Um, the stick I'm using this time has a little bit more um, things coming off it. It's not so smooth, so we'll see if that changes our pattern. And uh, I've got our basic white down, and let's go to work. Again, this is not anything <laughs> super complex. Um, when I go on larger canvases, I am standing up more straight and uh, letting this happen. This is just all over method, smaller version. And so we've got white, blue, and uh, let's go to another color. All right, I went and got another color. This is kind of a teal or I don't know if you'd call it turquoise. Not really that dark, more on the green side than the blue side. But uh, we'll put this on now and see what we come up with. So kind of flick, um, different sticks will create different paint patterns, how much you get, how much uh, you're flicking. And there is a little bit of uh, work to this as far as where do I want to put my paint. And. Uh, getting pretty abstract. I'm liking the way this is looking. I love the black base and then the colors just kind of pop um, out. It kind of gives it a 3D, 3D look and um, we'll get into some paper towel work now. Alright, so what I like to do is just get um, a small piece of paper towel and what I can do is um, go in and kind of blot and move around some paint. Um, I'm just flattening some lines out and I'm also uh, grabbing paint and mixing. So this looks good and I kind of hate to uh, <laughs> mess this up, but um, this is a process rather than a product I'm looking at, just kind of ex exploring, experimenting. So let's see what we come up with here. So I'm just gonna kind of blot down. The white's really dried a lot. And you can kind of see it's picking up and putting down a little bit um, as we go. And we can leave some of the lines there, but also we can um, let's blot a little bit. And that kind of mixes some paint and uh, creates some interesting techniques. And so 
interesting. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it is, and that's part of our process. And we can go back over this now with um, white, or um, I have like a, a purple type color. I also have browns that go great with, with blue and purple, so um, we'll keep going and just see how this progresses. All right, I have got more paint supplies and more brushes. Can you see these sticks? <laughs> All right, this is like a golden brown, and we will see how this goes. It's kind of flicking. Colors really make the work. You kind of develop techniques, but if you can find some great colors that just work together then um, it makes it more sp spectacular I guess with uh, with how it goes so um, getting quite a lot on there now and uh, I don't know if I want to go with the purple I have another brown that's slightly darker and I can go back over with some more white right now if I want to I think I'm gonna do that and again I'm not really worried about drying if they fuse a little bit um, that's, that's fine. And, uh, get another stick here. My white. There we go. And this kind of adds layers. We have the white underneath, and then we've got white back on top. And before there was acrylic pour, um, this was kind of the, the abstract go to um, and there's a lot of things you can do with it um, getting a lot on there but you see the process of applying um, I probably would have gone a lot thinner and less on this is a small canvas but um, it's very interesting I can also go over with some black now, and so I have black underneath and then black on top, which adds an uh, interesting look, so I might try that now. i got to go get that. I'll be right back. All right. I got some black, and I'm going to just put some basic uh, marks here. And you can uh, do your lines vertical or horizontal. And uh, I think I'm going to stop there for now. I'm not sure if I'll go further, but uh, that's your basic idea of how to do abstract expressionless painting. Um, small version. Alright, we are back. And believe it or not, this is the same piece. I blotted everything out and just kind of combined it for a base. And then went over with uh, white, the uh, teal the light golden brown and then white and so I am going to and also some black I'm going to add some uh, some purple now and uh, just see how we're going I don't know if I like it but it's therapeutic just to kind of play definitely abstract and interesting <laughs> so again um, sometimes you come up with stuff you really like sometimes it's just a process so not sure what I think of it but I'm gonna let it dry and uh, that is an idea how to do abstract expressionist paint and again you can go over this with a, uh, a putty knife with a color you just dip the putty knife into a uh, your paint and just kind of scrape across real lightly and you might want to um, kind of really scrape the paint before you do this and kind of do some test patterns 
but you can try different techniques and make some interesting work. All right, this is a larger canvas. Um, I originally went over with black. I did some all over method, um, then went over with black again. I uh, then drug the putty knife in paint, kind of create these different rectangle shapes, both vertical and horizontally. And then I went over with all over method again. So a lot of variations that you can do it. You can go straight all over method with a splatter. Um, and you can use different different items like Cheryl Glass Gleason uh, mentioned uh, making marks. And so another option you can use to uh, create in this way. All right, this is another example of uh, abstract expressionist painting I did with all over method. Um, this has layers of, I did some basic blotting and then um, I went over with the all over method with various blacks and whites. This is very um, interesting kind of web-like. Um, another thing I did and it kind of dries, I'll kind of come in on it, is I'll get a spray bottle and I'll really dilute some like white or gray or whatever color you want to use and stand back and just do some light sprays on on it. And this was an undercoat before I went over the final all over um, area and it just kind of adds, you can kind of see in here, um, right there. Kind of adds some depth um, underneath very web-like and it feels like there's stuff underneath kind of gives it an interesting look so um, yeah I'm gonna wait for my other painting to dry I'm gonna completely paint over it with black spray paint again and then I'm gonna do some dragging methods that we can use with a putty knife or um, I might try um, some thin strips of cardboard because it is a smaller piece so we'll see how that looks All right, this is another, yet another abstract expressionist painting I did. And um, this one is called A Murder of Crows. This one is interesting because what I did was I had done a piece, didn't really like the way it was turning out. And so um, I got the garden hose and washed it off. A cool thing you can do while the paint is still wet. Um, and so the canvas was damp. And so I wanted to try experiment of flicking paint onto a wet canvas and um, you can kind of see it kind of absorbs in. Um, it's got a really interesting look. Um, some of these dots were done with spray bottles. Some were just done with um, just flicking dots into the wet canvas and you can kind of see, almost leaves like a watercolor mark. It is water and these are colors. So um, this is um, some latex, some acrylic, and the other thing I wanted to point out, a little trick I learned, and you may know this already, but I'll share it, is, so this was in storage, and because I have a lot of art right now, because it's not being really shown anywhere, sometimes we get little accidents where something is pressed up against, and so, um, this is the back of the canvas, and so it had a little indentation where, uh, one other canvas was leaning against it, and so it kind of, bubbled out and so what you can do with canvas because it is a material um, sometimes cotton usually you can get um, water and just really moisten the back of the canvas if it's already painted you know front and back um, but usually there is um, a gesso down which kind of prevents any water coming but um, if it isn't if it is um, not painted um, on the surface you get it moistened and then use a blow dryer and that kind of um, pulls all the the fabric um, strands back together to its normal shape and so that is something you can do if you ever have a a canvas that gets dented up a little bit so we are back and i want to tell you what i've been doing since uh we've been waiting for this to dry i actually went over it with black spray paint while it was still wet and it left a really interesting um, textured look and uh me being curious um, couldn't leave well enough alone and I kind of went over it with a garden hose to see what would happen if it would pull paint away and create some interesting um, 
textures and it did and so this is what I came up with um, black spray paint over that original all over method and then when it got a little bit dry I uh, garden hosed it and left all these little lines and little torn up textures and so I'll wait for this to dry completely and then do some dragging over this and just keep playing with it and it is a process more than a product like I said before so We'll see how this goes. Okay, and we've got our interesting can uh, canvas here. What I found to do the scraping was actually the little paint sample sheets I used to turn in when I when I got the paint. And so that one blue is called Deep River. There you go. Now you know. All right. I've got a paper plate with some various colors. I have no idea how this is going to go. So I am going to grab one of these. And... Get a little bit of color on there. Flat it out and just drag it. Just drag it lightly across and see what happens. You can see it just kind of grabs some of the texture. That was kind of cool. I'll do it again. And get rid of some of the excess. Kind of vary your dragging. All right, so we'll get our frost. Let's see what color you want to do blue. We'll do some dragging. Uh, so let's go vertical here and see what happens. It's kind of light and interesting. All right, we'll get our river blue and let's grab the turquoise. That one teal was called a type of um, turquoise, by the way. So let's see. Interesting effect. And you can kind of like dab in areas where you want to add some. This is all new to me, so I do not, I've never done it in this type of texture before. So this is an experiment. I'm going to grab some of the titanium white acrylic. This is just all acrylic paint. Uh, I'm going real dry for me and uh, just grabbing and dragging. And sometimes you're gonna, if you go wet and you don't wait for it to dry, you're gonna grab some um, of the other paint that kind of mixes with it. And sometimes that's kind of cool, so. Let's see, I'm going to grab some uh, purple, and I'll be right back. Alright, I've got a little bit of purple. I will grab a clean sheet. What is this color? Turquoise. Alright, let's see. Just go light, we don't want to overpower. Our mess. <laughs> and you can see what we got going on. It's kind of got a misty, dream like look about it. what I came up with so you saw the various processes we went all over the place with it but um, abstract expressionism is a process like we've talked about this whole tutorial and you can go many ways with it you try many different techniques 
um, this was interesting. So thanks for joining me. Um, stay safe out there, stay creative, and uh, we will see you next time. All right, just like a Marvel movie, if you uh, stuck around for the credits, then uh, you can see something extra. This is the finished product of the whole process that we worked out today and kind of happy with the way it kind of turned out webby and misty like so um learning process for me and hope you enjoyed it you stay well out there and uh take care <laughs>